Hello students welcome to this discussion session on in the course of advanced structural analysis before we start on with the discussions and we proceed to study the subject course let me introduce myself to you i am mr satej ji dige belonging to the department of civil engineering kit's college of engineering autonomous kolhapur well this particular course the advanced structural analysis we are trying to consider this course as an extension to one of the courses which have studied previously in the course of structural analysis in your second year level there are various units to be discussed and today we'll be starting with the first unit of this particular course that is the influence line diagrams influence line diagrams itself is a vast topic and so the lesson first which we discuss here would be significance and construction of influence line diagrams so this particular lesson one will be focusing today uh, here what is the importance of these influence line diagrams as you are aware the for the definition and the whatever you have studied in your previous course this particular study is the study of structural behavior for rolling or dynamic loads there are certain structures which are subjected to rolling loads there are certain structures which are subjected to dynamic loads how does the structure behave in the presence of these loads that's what we try to understand with the use of all these influence line diagrams what is an influence line diagram well it is the curve which represents the variation of a certain particular quantity for the various positions of a unit load moving along the scope of the structure so when we are trying to study an influence line diagram we would be focused on a particular structural quantity and also for, uh, that quantity is for a particular specific structure these two points are to be remembered when we construct any one single influence line diagram let us try to understand what are the applications of this this particular study why do i require this study of influence line diagrams where do i apply the study knowledge of influence line diagrams there are three dominant uh, domains first one of them we can use these references we can use these studies for the selection of substructures for the approximate analysis of complex structures all civil engineering structures today are highly complex structures and obviously they cannot be studied manually we do resort to computer techniques and we get a detailed exact analysis through the computers but computer output is based on whatever information you give to the computers you have to decide whether the given information is correct and only if the given information is correct obviously the results would be correct any erroneous input to the computers would obviously lead unto erroneous answers so to check whether the analysis is correct whether i can rely on the analysis reports obtained from the computer i should be having a knowledge an approximate analysis of the complex structure which will help me to decide whether my study is correct whether my study is in the proper direction so that is one important domain for the application of ilds secondly i can use the design of gantry girders in an industrial shed by the using the concepts of ilds load positions can be determined which will give me the design values for the structural quantity and obviously the design of bridges as you know bridges are a dominant element of the infrastructure roads highways railways we do require bridges and these bridges are always subjected to moving vehicular loads the vehicular loads keep on changing the position and they keep on changing the structural quantities of interest for design so the ild study is very important over here how do i construct an ild to begin with the construction of an ild we take resort to one important principle that is the muller breslau principle the muller breslau principle 
can be used for the applications of ILDs of singly redundant structures. For example, a propped cantilever or a two-span continuous beam. So, obviously, we would be trying to consider one example on each of these substructures. But, this principle would not be so convenient every time for especially for multi uh, redundant structures multi redundant structures the muller principle principle application would be slightly complicated so there will be have to resort to some other techniques that is the direct approach the direct approach for ild of a singly or highly redundant structures when i say more redundant it could be dual redundant it could be having a redundant 3 it could be having a redundant 4 and so on so under this category we can be able to focus on two span continuous beams, fixed beams, two hinged arches. What is this Muller Breslau principle? What is this Muller Breslau principle? Well, the Muller Breslau principle states that the influence line of any action, the action implies either a force external or internal, or it could also be a moment. Moment is nothing but the ang uh, angular effect of a force. This angular effect of a force, which we term it as a moment, can also be in general called as a force or an action. And the influence line for any action assumes the scaled form of the corresponding deflected shape. This statement can also be stated as the ordinate of ILD for a reactive force is given by the ordinate of the elastic curve if a unit deflection is applied in the direction of the reactive force. So, this particular statement would be more easy to digest and understand, but the meaning of both is the same. So, here whenever I apply the Muller-Breslau principle to obtain the ILD, what should be important in my mind is that I am trying to study a particular quantity for a particular structure. I am trying to draw a construct an ILD for that particular quantity which may be a reactive force, which may be a reactive moment, which may be an internal straining force or any action force. This action force will be inducing a certain DS behavior in the structure uh, when it acts as a load and it will be forming a deformed elastic curve. The elastic curve of this structure can be called to be the ILD for that particular quantity of that particular structure. For example, supposing this is a beam. Well, sorry, uh, we will see that later on, but right now, where can I apply this weller? Where do I apply this Muller-Breslau principle in the constructions of ILDs? Well, it can be used to construct or sketch the influence line diagram for both determinate as well as indeterminate structures. This application of Muller-Breslau principle involves certain steps. Those steps will be highlighted over here. The construction of the elastic DAC curve for the study structure the construction of the elastic curve for the study structure will be the scaled influence line diagram for the structural quantity. So, what we do is first we release the ability of the structure for the quantity of interest and apply a unit load in its direction. The elastic curve points may be obtained by any convenient method the Macaulay's method, the conjugate beam method, the moment area method for the either the equation or as discrete values. We scale all these obtained deformations by a suitable scaling factor so as to make the deformation corresponding to the quantity of interest to be of unit magnitude. This scaling will help me to obtain the points which can be plotted and connected together smoothly to obtain the ILD. So, those were the important steps involved in the application of the Muller-Breslau principle for the construction 
of a particular ILD, releasing the quantity of interest, obtaining the elastic curve, scaling the elastic curve and finally getting the curve. I think today we can stop over here and then we will proceed on to the next part. So, that was our first lesson, how to construct an ILD.